Charging chart basics. Charging charts are provided by manufacturers of all equipment and they're going to vary from manufacturer to manufacturer but they're all pretty similar and many of the manufacturers will have a step-by-step -step guide on how to um, use their charging charts. We're going to use a very basic one today. It's going to be with an R22 system, fixed orifice, and the charge is going to be normal and we'll just take a look and see how you um, make sure that everything is operating as it should. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to hook up your uh, manifold gauges to the system. Your blue hose goes to the suction line. The red hose or high side goes to the discharge line. And then you're going to want to run in and turn that uh, thermostat down to 68, 66 degrees so that the system can, uh, has an opportunity to run for some time. Uh, there's nothing worse than not setting your thermostat down low enough and then you're halfway through checking the system and the uh, it shuts off and then you have to start all over again. So set the thermostat low, get the system running, and you want to let that run for 15 or so minutes to let the pressures and temperatures stabilize. Hook up your uh, temperature probe to the suction line. Make sure that it is securely fastened. If it's exposed to outdoor air, you want to make sure that you have um, it properly ins insulated so you're measuring this suction line right here. So while the system is running and stabilizing, you're going to want to pull the electrical panel off of the condensing unit and you'll find your charging chart will be on a sticker inside there next to the schematic diagram. And the way that you um, use this diagram, and we'll use this example that we have here, is you want to get your another thermometer or temperature probe out and measure the out, outdoor air temperature and make sure that you're not measure, measuring radiant heat or reflected heat off the side of the home so put your temperature probe somewhere in the shade and measure the air entering the condenser so, and in this example we're going to use a 90 degrees air temperature entering the condenser and then you'll go into the house and you're going to measure the indoor uh, air temperature here and this is most of the time you're going to use the dry bulb temperature and you just measure that with your regular thermometer you, you'll notice that there is a wet bulb temperature over on this side this is if you have a relative humidity of above 70 or below 20 percent inside the home you're not going to find that very often. Just run a quick check if you think it might be there. Be like that or if you're in Arizona somewhere where uh, the relative humidity is is pretty low. So um, most of the time you're going to find that you just need to measure the indoor dry bulb temperature of the home. So in this example it's 80 degrees dry bulb temperature in the home. So when you read that you know that you're going to use this line of the charging chart. Now if you read somewhere between 80 and 85 degrees you're going to have to draw an imaginary line um, down the chart to get your proper superheat. But in this instance we'll make it easy. 80 degrees indoor temperature, 90 degrees outdoor temperature. You will follow the outdoor temperature up till it intersects with the indoor temperature line on your chart and then you're going to follow it directly over to the vertical superheat range over here and you'll find that with a 90 degree outdoor air temperature and an 80 degree indoor air temperature the superheat of the system if it is properly charged should be 12 degrees So how do we figure out what um, our system is doing? So we know that we're looking for 12 degrees superheat and we're going to measure that in just a minute but we'll do a quick review on our low side suction gauge here and how our gauges work. If you remember from module 3 the our gauges are used to convert pressure 
to temperature. And we're doing an R22, looking at an R22 system here. So this inner green ring is our R22 temperature ring. And the outer blue ring is our pressure ring. So if you hook up your gauge and the needle moves from 0 up to 50 PSIG, that doesn't tell you too much. But if you read a little bit further, and see where this gauge crosses the R22 temperature ring, you can see that it's measuring a saturation temperature of 25 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, one of the confusing things on for a lot of technicians is, our, is what the gauge is actually reading. I want you to picture that when you hook up your gauge and you're reading 25 degrees Fahrenheit saturation temperature. This is what's happening inside the evaporator coil and right in the middle of the evaporator coil. This is the temperature, the saturation temperature of the refrigerant inside the house in the evaporator coil inside the air handler. Don't forget that. And here's why. If you have a, if you have your gauges hooked up and you're measuring 70 PSIG, you're, you have your gauges hooked up right here and you're measuring 70 PSIG. Then you have your temperature probe is hooked up just a few inches away and you're measuring some pressure and you start to convert this. Remember that, that when you convert the 70 PSIG to temperature, this is measuring the temperature of the evaporator coil that is in the air handler probably 25 to 50 feet away from this connection right here. Don't be confused because they're only several inches away that th these two measurements that you make right here are all happening at this point. Okay, so 70 PSIG on your on your low side gauge. We're measuring the indoor um, evaporator coil temperature right in the middle of the coil. We are now and we measure 50 deg two degrees Fahrenheit at um, the suction line, that physical temperature right there. So the first thing you want to do is you're going to convert that 70 PSIG which is right here to saturation temperature and that happens to be 40 degrees Fahrenheit and remember superheat equals measured temperature so that's your temperature that you're measuring at the suction line right here minus the saturation temperature which you have converted from your low side pressure gauge to 40 PSIG that's the center of the evaporator coil. So your superheat equals 52 degrees, which is your measured temperature, minus 40 degrees, which is your saturation temperature, and that comes out to 12 degrees Fahrenheit. And on our charging chart, we saw that with a 90 degree outdoor air temperature, 80 degree indoor temperature, we should have a 12 degree Fahrenheit superheat so you know the system is operating and charged properly. Now if your superheat measurement is too high you need to add refrigerant. If the superheat is too low you need to remove refrigerant. Remember that if, if you're adding refrigerant you need to add a little at a time because removing refrigerant to, to adjust to charge is painstakingly long, detailed. You have to get out recovery machines and to do everything properly. So um, when you're adding refrigerant, just a little bit at a time. So that is our basic um, charging chart with a system that's charged properly. We'll take a look. We'll take a look at uh, a refrigeration cycle again and what's happening with the refrigerant in in that cycle and we'll look at an undercharged system first. That's what you're going to find more often, but that'll be in the next several videos.